What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. We're down here in uh, beautiful Arizona and we're, we're catching a lot of fish. We're doing some flipping, pitching, uh, a lot of Texas rigging and realize that we've never actually shot an in-depth Texas rig video. Yeah. So today we're gonna sit down, kind of do a little bit seminar style video from finesse all the way up to two ounce punching and yeah. everything in between. Yeah, we're gonna lay it all out there, explain the different ways to do it, how we do it. I use a, a very simple method, almost too simple for some circumstances. Uh, Tim is a little more branched out than I am. We're gonna give you both approaches, walk you through the different hooks, what they're for. Uh, we won't really nail down the rigging per se. We're not gonna sit and show you the knots, but we'll tell you what they are. We've got videos that show you most of the knots anyway. Um, so we can link you guys back to that. But for now, we're just gonna run you through the different styles when we use them, why we use them. Why don't you start at finesse and we'll just work our way all the way up to heavy flipping and pitching. Well, I think to start off, we gotta, I mean, what is the definition of Texas rigging? Texas rigging is a, is a method of rigging a bait. Let's, uh, here, let's just rig one up real fast. So there's so many different types of rigs. You hear A rigs, Carolina rigs, Texas rig. Right. Uh, Texas rig is, is really hooking the bait turning the hook back into itself and bringing it back through and it's a, a weedless bait. Slide that up and then we turn it. And then what we'll do is we'll take that hook, punch it through. And then you can either skin hook it like this and that's called text posing. Or instead of coming all the way through, you go right up into the core of the bait. and the hook's actually inside. You gotta set a little harder to get it out, but that's the other way of doing it. Both work well. So when people are referencing Texas rig, that is the that is the, the, the basics, rig. right? That is the rig. You come through your bait, turn your hook, rig it back into the belly, and it's weedless, but you can do it in all different types of presentations. Right. Um, so starting with finesse, you can take little tiny bullet weights and little tiny hooks little tiny hooks right you could Texas rig a four inch shad robo worm you can Texas rig little tiny kitex you can Texas rig any of those little tiny finesse baits with little 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 uh, little weights and little hooks now the two different style hooks I use I use the um, straight shank. So what that is, that's just a, a straight shank hook. This actually has a, a, a barb on it for a bait keeper, but it's just a straight shank hook. And I use this when I'm fish, fishing uh, little worms and I want a bigger, I guess a bigger hook gap and a, a different hook angle. If you can see, if I, when I go to rig that hook back into that bait, you can see the angle this is gonna have It's it's actually pointing up, so it's right. gonna it's gonna stick into the roof of the of the fish mouth. So this is an EWG or a wide gap style hook, which is typically what I use. But the difference is, if you see, I come through and it's laying flush on the back of that bait, versus laying it I don't know a thirty degree 30 angle, degree something like that, something where that like hook point that. is poked up and out. So as soon as you pull it all, that hook point is coming out of the bait. There are advantages to both. Uh, I mentioned that I, I keep a very simple method most of the time. I almost always use EWG style hooks. Uh, when I'm finesse fishing, I go to a just a lighter wire EWG. They come in a light wire as well as a super line or an extra heavy wire. And that's how I get away with it. But I'll tell you frankly, the reason that I do that is very, very simple. And it's not necessarily even catch related. Uh, it's that my baits hold up a really, really long time. I spend a lot of time on the water, I go through a lot of baits, and I have a lot of clients on my boat when I'm working, and you go through a lot of baits. When that hook point is poked out, you're more likely to get snagged up, you're more likely to tear the bait up, uh, you just go through a lot of product. So if you fish a lot, it makes a big difference. So I use an EWG style because it's really 
here at the base of that hook, it's sitting on just a flat hook, right? It does not want to move. It doesn't want to come out. My hook point is protected, so I can flip in this heavy cover over and over and over and over again, and I don't beat up the bait at all. They last a long time. But that hook angle that we're talking about is a big deal. For me to get a good hook in a fish, they have to fully eat it. Then I hit them and it curls coming out of their mouth and it hooks up on them. The way that Tim is talking about rigging, they so much as get a hold of that thing at all and they've, they're they on a hook point, it catches. So there's a, big, there's a big difference there. There's advantages to both. Having baits last longer versus honestly a better hookup ratio, especially on a finesse bait where you're on lighter line and you're trying to just get a hook in those fish. Right. It is a big difference. And that's why I wanted to talk to you a little bit when we're starting off with the finesse and we'll get all the way up to two ounce weights and punching. But with the finesse application, I feel like with the lighter line, with that that different degree hook angle, I get better hook penetration uh, with that light line, the light rods. And that's why I go with the straight shank on that. Now, I'm sure if you're finesse fishing, you can go with an EWG style. I know owner makes a couple. We're gonna link to a lot of that stuff down below in the video description. Yeah. Uh, but Texas rigging, you know, little weights, you can go weedless. If you want to throw like a four inch or a five inch Senko, a weightless worm, this one's actually a, a six inch, but that's rigged on an EWG. You can throw that on a straight shake as well. But what Matt's talking about, you can see how that hook is laying flush. It's laying parallel to the bait. It's almost tipped back in. You're going to go through a lot less baits. You're going to be more weedless. Mm -hmm. um, there are benefits to doing the EWG as well. But all of these things that we're going to talk about, the different types of hooks, can be applied through the whole gamut of all finesse, right. all the way up to, you know, the heaviest power fishing, you know, ten pounders, two ounce weights. So right. So from the finesse all the way up, that finesse application, you know, we're talking. You're on a lake where you're throwing little tiny baits, or he even mentioned that Kitek. You know, we're throwing the Kitek on that little tiny swim bait head. We do that a lot. You guys do that a lot. It works. But if your fish move up into the grass or into the cover, they get up along the bank, instead of throwing on that exposed hook, you can put it on a little EWG style hook or a little light wire straight shank hook and just put a little tiny weight out on the nose of that bait. It's a little tiny weight, eighth ounce, something like that. And that'll ride on your line in front of that bait. You end up with the exact same result end result right. as rigging on that exposed jig hook Just except you're weedless and you can run it through all kinds of cover that is the advantage of texas rigging is that weedlessness for every application it works well on little tiny tiny baits all the way on up now right. mid-range baits you know the beaver style baits flipping last year we talked a ton about the archelon you know, another just creature style bait mm -hmm. uh all these baits, again, I'm using that EWG, EWG style hook. My number one hook in my box, I mean, if I pull out my hook box, there's a zillion hooks in there, but I have one compartment that's like overflowing <laughs> and it's four aught EWG Superline. That is yeah, like my, my, yeah, that hook right there, that hook right there. Um, that is my main hook because it works well in a six inch Senko, which is a great all around size, works well in a beaver, works well in an archelon, works well in a brush hog. I mean, it works well in like all these staple middle of the road baits, baits that you just, when you get to a lake, you don't know, you just want to try, see if there's a creature bait bite, see if they'll eat a Senko. It's a good all around size. So I use that particular hook a ton. Yeah. Yeah. One hot to four hot. That seems probably the, yeah. that'll, that's kind of the, the range I use as well. You know, so getting back to uh, the straight shank hook, you know, something like this. Now you're 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 punching, you're pitching, you're flipping, you're going with big weights. That is going to give you the same benefits, like I said, for on that finesse worm. But now you're you're going to tie a snell knot, and we're not going to maybe we'll yeah, we won't even worry about. We're it not going right to get now. into it. But with that hook, with that with what that does, it allows the hook to rotate, and you just got that huge gap. You get the straight shank, and it's just got that different angle, like I said. Um, but that is primarily what most guys use. They Texas rig, but they're they're using the bigger straight shank hook. 
Now, on, on that topic right there, and we're not going to tell you what's right and wrong. We want you to try these things for yourself. Uh, again, I typically use an EWG. You typically use a straight shank. Tim is using the industry standard. If you're flipping, true flipping, heavy, heavy gear, punching with an ounce, ounce and a half, two ounces, pitching. the industry, yeah, pitching, pitching with it, <laughs> yeah. the industry absolutely says use a straight shank. Um, I tend to defer away away from that. I Even when I'm punching heavy, heavy gear, I use that yeah, EWG. Sure. Again, personal preference. It comes down to style of fishing because there's not a right answer for everybody and that's why we're not telling you what's right because i can i can be adamant that this is the best thing in the world but if you don't fish the same way i do with the same gear it's not the best thing for you if you fish the same way i do it is uh, industry standard is to straight shank so that when you hit those fish hard that hook rolls up pokes them right in the roof of the mouth every time disadvantage of that method is because you're hitting them so hard with such heavy gear, it tends to rip a big hole in the roof of the mouth. Rips a great big hole, and if you let any pressure off, it can fall out. That's the downside. So for me, I go EWG because when I stick them, when you hit them on an EWG hook, it changes hook angle. It actually rolls up on them, and it's harder for that thing to get back out of the hole. The straight shank just goes in a straight shot and it can come out in a straight shot. This goes in and turns on them. The disadvantage is that EWGs are nowhere near as strong. When, it, when it's true punching, they are not as strong. So I tend to drop down the powers of my rod a little bit to, to make up for that. But when I tie into a freak in that heavy, heavy cover, every once in a while I get owned because I'm using an EWG. So for me, my daily, I really, really like it, but once in a while it burns me. And that's, that once in a while is where that wouldn't burn me for sure. Right. Yeah, and jumping all the way back down to the bottom of the, the, the finesse fishing, one of the reasons I like the straight shank versus the EWG is you know, you're, the whole point of rigging Texas is to be weedless, but you're adding this whole other angle right here that mm -hmm. sticks out, that protrudes out from the bait that can get hung up on stuff. So it's just one more, one more disadvantage. But again, we're not telling you which one to do because I, I own them all. I, I use them they all in different work. applications. Right. Uh, it's just personal preference. Right. It really does come down to personal preference. The one other thing that I'll add, can I see that your finesse hook? One other thing that I'll add when you're finesse fishing is where the biggest difference is. And I'm even going against myself on this one because I already said that I like to use an EWG. But I'll tell you flat out, an EWG is so much more hook hanging out the back side of the bait. It's so much more hook that it's literally more weight. And if you're truly using finesse baits, it, it changes your sink rate. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want a bait to float slow and just barely come down, it, it can burn you to use that style hook. And the style of Tim, that Tim is using really works better for that. You get a slower fall out of your bait. Now granted, you've got a weight on there, uh, but if you're not pegging, Right. That that makes a huge difference. Yeah, something like a weightless worm or something. And you guys are probably thinking, well, why don't you just get a you know a lighter wire hook? There's actually just more hook, more, more right. metal. Right. It's, it's just literally a bigger bend. It's a, There's it's a more metal bend. in it. Uh, and then last would be pegging versus not pegging. And are there pegs over there? Yeah, we've shot videos on this in the past. Right. It all depends on. You know, if you don't peg and you throw your bait out there, that weight's gonna fall first, right? The weight's gonna fall, your bait's gonna be up here, and eventually that bait's gonna get down there. When you peg, you're, you're putting a bobber stop on there, and you're pegging that bait to, or that, that weight to the bait, and it's gonna be one presentation. It's gonna, it's gonna fall very quickly. So you're changing your fall rates. Right, so that's a pegged rig. Essentially everything, like he said, is all glued together as one. It goes into the cover together, it comes out of the cover together, it all falls together very, very quickly. Whatever your weight is, that's how fast your bait will fall. If you eliminate that peg and you've got just a free floating hook on the line, you pitch into that exact same piece of cover, that weight plummets to the bottom, but that bait is very, very slow to fall. That's where that wire size and using EWG versus straight shank makes such a big difference. 
Uh, and it also is much more difficult to get in and out of cover. It's harder to get in because the weight makes it in, but the bait is, is so much lighter, it doesn't want to follow into the cover. And it's harder to get out because they can end up taking different paths into the cover and get you snagged up. So pegging... But, but sometimes you get more baits because your bait is free-floating and not rocketing down past them. Absolutely. If it's not a reaction bite and it's more of a finesse bite, you might want to think about not pegging because you're going to get that real slow fall. Exactly. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. Again, you need to try them. If you're now, I think we would agree. If you're flipping heavy, heavy co cover, you're Peg. pegging. Probably right? two you, pegs. <laughs> right, two pegs to hold it all in place. You need to be pegged so that it goes in and comes out together, and it can get through. You know, when you start talking ounce and a half to two ounce weights, you need that to get through that super heavy overhead cover. If you're not pegged, the bait can't follow through. The bait literally just lays on the surface on every cast and will never penetrate through. So you need those giant, giant weights. You need pegs. But at the other end of the spectrum, sometimes it's great to be without it. Dock fishing is finesse one application. Fishing. Yeah, yep. finesse fishing. Where you wanna just pitch in there, that weight will go down and that bait will just slowly chase it. You get a lot more bites. So guys, we didn't necessarily answer a lot of questions with this. We want you to understand the differences in the hooks. It is a simple system. Even to use both styles is very, very simple. You don't need to buy much. Couple different kinds of hooks, couple key sizes, couple key weights, buy some pegs. Your pegs are like a dollar or two uh, and you're in. You know, And then you can throw virtually any soft plastic. You can throw creature baits, Straight tail worms, curly tail worms, swim baits, Anything. Yep. everything on that rig. If you're not using a Texas rig, uh, you, are, you are limiting yourself. You need to use it. Uh, there are a lot of applications where it's critical that you have it, and there's a lot of other applications where it's just a great benefit to have it. I hope that helps. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.